Imagine waking up every day with an active lava flow right in your backyard. That's the reality facing Pahoa resident Alfred Lee and his family in recent weeks. Because last night, last night you could see them. Really big glow, you know, that's about all. Like many residents in Pahoa Village, Lee faces the almost certain destruction of his home should the June 27th lava flow continue to advance downslope. But he isn't giving up without a fight. Alfred Lee has made national headlines for building a last-minute berm around his property. Other than that, he's, he's high enough. I don't, I don't think he's got to move already. Yeah. The topic of diverting the lava flow has been a hot-button issue in the community ever since the lava flow first began to threaten populated areas of Pune. I mean, with the park that you're putting in, with the new shopping centers and everything, so I would think that you want to try and protect it some way. I think the root of your question is, would we be diverting the flow? And as we've shared in previous meetings, you know, the diversion of the flow brings with its own risks, as well as we have a significant respect for the cultural side of eruptions here in Hawaii. So it's balancing all of that, but we do understand that if we were to deploy any kind of diversion, we live with the outcome of that, which could be worse than the original problem. Hawaii County emergency officials were asked over and over if the lava can somehow be diverted from its course. Like, you know, smart bombs or uh, dynamite. Wow, bro, get rid of that wall. Let it go back down Kalapana. Yeah. The talk of diversion didn't sit well with longtime residents of Puna, whose families have lived through destructive lava flows in the past. To Native Hawaiians, Pele is our kupuna, she's our ancestor. The debate came to a head at this public meeting in September. This is Pele's home and to come in and say, Pele, you go here in her house is heaven. And we need to stop. No need divert them. If you respect enough, she go around. Whether you believe it's Tutu Pele or you just believe on the scientific facts that it's lava, you cannot change the direction. It's mother nature. It's like, you te it's like me telling you, move the moon because it's too bright. After that, the argument went quiet. Most accepted their fate, whatever it might be. I know, but I don't know where the gate's at. Well, we might not even be able to get through. And so there was no indication of what Alfred Lee, a well-known local bulldozing contractor, had up his sleeve when community emergency response teams paid him a visit on his property. Because he should come out right between the trees. Oh, nice. So otherwise you'd have a front row seat then, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. He has okay. actually been in the community for quite some time now. Um, he does quite a bit of work around the area, and um, he's leaving his residence. Oh, awesome. All right. And whatever I know move, she can have. She can have. That's right. He's ready to go. <laughs> oh, you're okay, here. Okay, mine's right here. You're here. Okay. Right here. Okay. This here is my neighbor. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so do you... Do you know of any houses like back up in here? No. No. Okay. And these guys will move already. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, They're yeah. gone. Okay, cool. Okay. So. And then Melvin, Melvin is still here. Okay. The lava crossed Apa'a Street on October 25th. It entered the cemetery and then farmland only 600 yards upslope from Pahoa Village Road. Aerial video above the flow showed Lee in a bulldozer pushing dirt around his property. The next day, his newly constructed berm made front page news. County officials seemed wary. Daryl, John Burnett from the Tribune Herald. Uh, the berm that was built by the private homeowner out there, um, do you guys have any concerns about that? Could it perhaps divert the lava to other properties where it might not otherwise go? And uh, the legality of the structure itself, is, is it legal to do that much uh, grading on a property like that without a permit? Well, our, our public works department has um, been out there and they're going back out there to get a review and assess the berm. So it's, uh, it's very difficult to have any discussions with people who recommend or would like to suggest diversion because no matter what we do with the flow at this point, it's turning it into an area that it affects someone else. So we will be working with that property owner as well as uh, discussing the concerns with the neighboring residents about what has been constructed um, and went forward from there. 
has it uh, diverted it to, in, in any other direction at this point? No, it hasn't even reached the constructed berm. Let's say a couple of hundred yards from that berm. Thank you. The lava flow slowed down as the front neared the 15-foot high berm. Lee's neighbor, Melvin Sugimoto, owns the ag land surrounding the endangered home. The lava has already taken many of his macadamia nut trees and cacao. This helicopter video shows one of Sugimoto's workers spraying the margin of the lava flow with a water hose. Sugimoto said he was just trying to save his shade house for one more day, as a berm was being built on his property around the south side of the flow. Derek Peter Sarath on Civil Beat. Um, the lava that's approaching the berm that the homeowner has cr constructed, how close is it to that berm? And what's the status there? Uh, as of this morning when I was on the ground, which is around 6.30, there was no activity um, at that advanced uh, front. And it was, uh, I would estimate, between 5 and 10 feet from the berm. And it's a very narrow finger that's right there uh, that hasn't moved. So it's still uh, some ways away, like I said, 5 to 10 feet away. There's no activity advancing in a direction towards the berm uh, as of this morning. A few days later, here's what it looked like on the ground. The shade house was still standing. The lava stopped at the base of the extended berm. The flow appeared stalled, but it was hot and had already inflated to a height equal to that of the berm. That same day, on the north margin of the flow front, Alfred Lee appeared, sipping a coffee. That one and it came up, and I was over there, looking at the hole, and it started to rain. So I took one sheet iron roof, you know, put them on the tree for go underneath. Yeah, I must have had about 300 cockroaches. <laughs> White ones, too. It was apparent that Lee had a historic understanding of the topography of the area. No, it, 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 yeah, it's just with plantation makes the road oh. every every time harvest time you know they yeah. put new material so you get higher and higher and higher you know so i probably following that so when it big big rain here uh -huh. you go up to the pastures and you look at all the water holes how big the water holes then from there you can tell when the water will be down here And there was, you know, before I built my house and everything. And when the water come down, it's rapids. Then after the plantation, Melvin fixed up his. Then when I built my house, I, you know, fixed up all mine. But we just kept the water. Because mm -hmm. Melvin, down there, he had one holding pond where he kept his water. So when I made mine, I made one more holding pond. So you flow from Melvin to mine, then mines to the back of the sisters. And if the water's still there, well, the neighbor down the road with a concrete house, his grounds get flooded. With offerings to Pele of tea leaves and rice surrounding his berm, Lee continues watching and waiting, along with the rest of Pahoa, to see where the June 27th lava flow might go next. We cover that. And the market and stone.